Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Your company's accounts receivable account monitors the amounts of goods and services sold to customers. When a transaction is posted to accounts receivable, Sage 50 first updates the associated journal and then posts the amounts to the general ledger. The first part of working with your company's accounts receivables was done when the customer defaults were created after the initial creation of the company file. Within the customer defaults, you set the standard customer terms, invoice aging, and more. Once that is done, you can then turn to adding customers to your customer list. When you add new customer records, they will have their default information set up to match any settings specified within your customer defaults. You can change this information within the specific customer record as you're creating the record if needed. After that, you will only need to enter the information that is unique to each customer. When you add new customers, you do so through the Maintain Customers Prospects window, and you can open this window by selecting Maintain from the menu bar and then choosing the Customers Prospects command. Now the top of the Maintain Customers Prospects window has two text fields and two checkboxes. The first text field is the Customer ID. This is the code that you use to uniquely identify each customer. There is also the name of the customer, and this is the name that you want to show on reports and invoices. The two checkboxes that are shown are Prospect and Inactive. Prospect is the checkbox that you check if the customer is a prospective customer. You might check this for a customer for whom you've created a quote, but have not yet performed any actual work or invoicing. You cannot invoice a prospect, so be aware of that if you choose to use this feature. They become regular customers once you clear the check from this checkbox. Inactive is the checkbox that you check to make a customer inactive so the record will no longer appear within your customer list. Next on the General tab, you'll see basic customer billing and contact information. Here you can input information for the bill to contact for the customer record. This includes address, phone, and other commonly used contact information. Note that this tab is also where you assign customers their tax codes by using the sales tax dropdown. You will need to assign one tax code for each ship to address that you enter. You can also enter your own custom customer type into the text box of the same name. This field's value can later be used as a filter for reporting and finance charge purposes. You also enter contact information such as the phone numbers, email address, and fax number. If available, you can also enter the customer's website address into the website text box. Now notice that once you have created a customer and have invoiced them for goods or services, you can view the current amount of their receivables balance on this tab. To see the list of invoices which make up the current balance, click the actual balance amount that's shown in this tab in order to display a listing of the invoices that constitute the receivables balance that's shown on the tab. In the Customizable Fields section below, you can see the custom fields that you've created for customers within the Customer Defaults window. Here you can enter the specific values for those fields for this customer record within the section on the General tab. Now if this customer has multiple contacts, then you would next click the Contacts tab to record additional contact information for multiple contacts at a single company. To create a new contact, first click the New Contact button that appears at the bottom of this tab. You can then enter the contact information into the fields that are shown. Now if you wish to enter a new address for the selected contact, Click the Edit Addresses button to open the Contact Addresses window. Here you can enter the various addresses used by this company.
Then when you're finished, simply click the OK button. You can then select an address for the current contact from the Addresses drop-down that appears on the Contacts tab. Now when you finished editing the contacts information, just click the Save Contact button to save the contacts information. Now also, you can select a contact from the Select a Contact drop-down that appears at the top, and then click the Delete Contact button to delete a contact that you will no longer need at a company. Now note that some contacts are needed by Sage 50 and cannot be deleted, such as the primary billing contact. Now if you need to enter outstanding invoices and amounts that the customer owes to the company as of the company file start date, you can perform this task by clicking the History tab and then clicking the Customer Beginning Balances button. You can then enter any invoices that need to be received as of the start date of the company file into the separate window that appears. You can then save and close the window once you're finished. On the Sales Info tab, you can enter sales information for the customer record. This tab shows sales reps, shipping methods, pricing levels, and the general ledger sales account that's used by default for the customer. The Sales Rep field is the sales representative for that customer. The General Ledger Sales Account is the default General Ledger Income Account which most transactions for this customer will fall under. This, of course, can also be changed on a per transaction level as needed. The Open PO Number field is used for customers that have an open purchase order with your company. The Ship Via field is used to select the default shipper that's used for this customer's orders. Once again, this is a field that you can always change at the time of sale as well. The resale number field is used to record the tax ID number of customers that purchase items for resale. The pricing level field is used to indicate the pricing level for the customer. This can always be changed during invoicing as well. You can select how the customer prefers forms sent to them by choosing either the Paper Form or Email Options button within the Form Delivery Options section. When you print bulk forms or batch forms like statements from the Selector Report or Forms window, this choice determines whether the form will be displayed for printing or automatically emailed. Next, you can set specific terms for this particular customer record that override the default standard terms by clicking the Payments and Credits tab. Next, in the Terms and Credits section, you would use the drop-down to select the customized terms for this customer choice. You can then set the specific purchasing terms that are applied to this customer only in the section below the drop-down menu. The Payment and Credit tab also lets you store payment information used for customer receipts. If the customer pays most frequently by credit card, you can enter the cardholder's name field with the name on their credit card used for purchases. You can also type the address, which will default to the billing address information automatically. You can also enter the credit card number used for purchases along with the expiration date. In the Receipt Settings section, you can specify the default payment settings for the selected customer. If the checkbox for Use Payment Method and Cash Account from the last saved receipt is checked, then the Payment Method and Cash Account fields shown within the Receipts window default to the values of the last saved receipt when this customer is selected within that window. You can clear the check from this checkbox to set up a default payment method and cash account used for the customer's payments when this customer is selected within the receipts window. On the History tab, you'll see Sales, Receipts, Last Invoice, and Payment Information for the selected customer. 
The information on this tab is updated every time you enter a transaction for this customer in Sage 50. You can enter historical information when creating a new customer if desired. This information will then be automatically updated by Sage 50 as you create transactions for the customer in the future. Once you've finished entering this information, you can click the Save button to save it, and if you wish to continue creating new customer records, you can click the Save and New button to just save the information and create a new blank record. When you're completely finished, just click the Close button in order to close the Maintain Customers Prospects window. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.